This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What is going on guys? So we're here on a no cooling call and this is a 407C Liebert unit. Uh, usually they're pretty dedicated for uh, commercial applications like uh, server rooms and stuff like that, which is what it's being used for. If it's running, I swear I smell refrigerant. So I get over here and I touch this, what I assume is the liquid line, but it feels like discharge gas. I mean, it is hotter than all get out. Suction line feels room temperature. We're gonna get tore into this thing and see what we can find out what's going on. So we come down here, you can see they've got a pressure regulating valve there for something with a solenoid right there. And we got another solenoid up there, which one of these were just replaced from what I was reading. You need to figure out what's going on. You got a receiver here that's potentially indicating it's low. Can't really see everything from this angle, so we're gonna have to yank the top off. One of the bolts down there didn't want to come off either. Yeah, it's super nice and bright out here. The good old sun's just blasting. So coming in here to the top, we have a head pressure control valve. For it being hot as what it is, makes me wonder if one of these valves are sticking open. And we are hot to trot here on that. That is your discharge line off of the compressor. Right, one of these here, that should be, well, that's your receiver there, so. The compressor, if you can see it down there somewhere. Suction, there's discharge. So the discharge goes down, right there, goes down, loops back up. What do we got going on here? I have not worked on a bunch of these. So you've got discharge coming out. Okay, it's teed in there. You got a solenoid coming up to that regulating valve there. But you also can come in and go, which you can't see because it's so bright and dark back in there, but comes in, looks to me like, yeah, it comes in, it comes out and goes in here to the top. So assuming that that valve is shut, which it feels awfully hot to be shut. And this one feels hot too. And you have a head pressure control valve there. So let's just say we get through the coil and come out of the coil, which would be this one right here, I think. So much crap down there, you can't even hardly see. And then there's oil too, which is a really good sign. Great if we have something to look at here to kind of give us a piping idea how this thing is done, but it's all electrical and that's it. Super useful. We're running about 53 pounds on 407C which I'm gonna guesstimate to be somewhere in the ballpark of what the 22 uh, spectrum there is. I'll have to look on the chart to find out. So we are going through, we're going through extremely too hot. One of these valves is acting up, obviously. So yeah, I'm gonna have to check with the, the guy that was here before. Okay, so checked with the other guy and see what he had. He said he had a solenoid valve that was sticking. So that's why he changed that solenoid. So he put his magnet on it, and moved it a little bit, and all of a sudden it broke loose, which Unfortunately, they got him a freaking valve that was all brass, which I hate when they give us that crap. It's hell to try to braze in. So you gotta probably use a couple of nubs to get into it, which I can't even see if I'm getting in the picture. Well, anyhow, what I wanted to do, because it does feel like it's completely bypassing that condenser coil, because we are at 160 something here on that discharge. I checked that right now. Um, Suction was 55, I think you've seen, while well, our liquid is 150. And it is currently what looks like maybe 74 out here. So uh, it sounds to me like we're low. And then like I said originally, just looking at that, what looks to be oil down there in the bottom, looks like we've got a, a leak. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and shut her down, go grab the leak detector. But yeah, we feel super hot coming through there. That gray valve there, appears to be a hot gas bypass basically what it'll do is it will dump hot gas which there's a solenoid before it 
and it should dump into what would be the suction. You see it comes up through here, and then there's a T, and it goes into the suction. That maintains minimum suction pressure. But then you also have another valve over here that is on the suction line, so it must be a moderator there. It's, it's kind of like doubling up things. It appears to me that it's gonna dump it right back into the liquid. Man, I tell you what, that's just some, some fuzzy stuff right there. But yeah, it's, um, that's where we're at. Let's go grab the detector and see if we got a leak. All right, it's a little hot up there. I figure I'll get a drink real quick and give me a chance to show you the uh, Vito lunch bag, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty decent size. Uh, they've got two different ones. It's got a uh, front piece here, which you know you can put your gum and lemonade or whatever in there. And then it's got a magnetic snap here. And believe it or not, I was really surprised how well this thing does. So just one frozen bottle of water is more than enough to keep all these cold all day, no problem at all. And this liner here is removable and they have black uh, high pressed uh, styrofoam in there. And then this lid also, same thing, it's uh, insulated there, which it has a heck of a uh, lip that hooks in there. This thing, uh, you put like regular ice in there and it really keeps it nice and cold. It's a little on the higher end. I mean, you're looking about 200 bucks before your 8% discount with survival as your discount code, but it does have the five year um, warranty. It has a removable handle here. And it also has a nice carrying strap, which the carrying strap by itself, I think is like 35, 40 bucks. Uh, it is made out of that rubbery material here and it has the rubbery material on the bottom that you've seen before. So yeah, it's doing, uh, pretty good check it out true tech tools guys uh so i wanted to try it out for a few weeks before i decided to say anything about it i think it can hold like 12 bottles you can see how deep that thing is the old uh subco umbrella comes in super handy this white roof is just reflective as all get out did a quick scan around you can see down here how we've got oil signs down here and i'm not getting nothing down there i've scanned all through in here, scanned around threads, pop-offs, threads, all down in this area here, which there's nothing in particular that like stands out. You've got some check valve there. Not seeing oil in any of that. Check the pressure switches, that butt end of them. Uh, if you come back here on the back, you can see We've got signs of oil down here on this coil. We've got about 75 pounds of pressure right now. And I'm not getting anything here. I go up a little higher. You see it, you know, that stuff with a fan running, it'll blow that oil everywhere. That pressure's already up there, 225-ish. Look at that. Now it's not hot. What the heck? May have a head pressure control valve issue. Definitely hot here. Not hot here, coming out. And it's not hot out of the uh, other side of the head pressure control valve there. Uh, I can feel heat rejecting over here. So the original thought was it, the pressure is low and the valve was bypassing because of it. Jumping back to the suction pressure. We're running about 65 pounds there, it looks like. 67. Head pressure. About 190-ish. We'll throw the digital gauges on here in a minute to get some actual saturation, actual saturation temperatures. All right, coming in here, it looks like we're running a 43 degree evaporator and a 91 degree condensing temperature on 407. We can come in here for giggles and see what we get for superheat and subcooling. Okay, we got our probes hooked on the suction and liquid line. Now it does have a receiver, so your subcooling is gonna be a little lower. Jumping down there to it, you can see that we're running about a 15, 14 degree superheat, maybe a little lower. Subcooling's right in there at four degrees. So refrigerant level is probably fine. We probably don't have a leak. Uh, this was worked on, like I said, maybe two, three weeks ago, and I'm not picking anything up at all. So I don't know that maybe that was existing oil from before, from maybe when they changed the compressor, because that looks like a newer compressor. Uh, the, 
compressor to serial number on it. Looks like it is a 23, so that's a fairly new compressor, so chances are they may have gotten some spilt. Appears to me that we had a head pressure control valve that was acting up. The solenoid here feels like it's energized right now. We can try out the meter here, which once again, it was time to get some new stuff to try out just to see how it does. We are giving the Testo a shot here, which so far it's been pretty good. Um, has a lot more features in my Fluke, but my Fluke is a little bit quicker on doing capacitance. And, uh, but otherwise it's got that neat, and I guess these have been out for like seven years now. So it's still be a maze, it must work. Okay, so we're pulling, it appears to be nothing. This does have DC amps, okay. So that solenoid is energized. You can see we have five amps there. That's an arbitrary number. Basically it's telling you that there is a magnetic field there. And so we know that one's energized. And come up here to the other one. Let's see if we can get a magnetic field off of that one. That one is about 24 amps. Now, like I said, that's an arbitrary number. Doesn't necessarily mean, doesn't mean there's any amperage at all there like that. That's just telling you there is a magnetic field. That's all amperage reading is measuring the flux lines around the uh, wire. One neat thing about this one though, uh, that I have to jump up to my Flux uh, 376 is this one's got amperage and frequency at the same time. Uh, this is the 377.3-3. dash It's got inrush, which is something else only my higher end fluke has got. And um, it's got watt calculations and microamps, capacitance, DC, uh, AC, amperage, both. I think the price without the uh, probes and stuff somewhere in the 240 range. Then uh, the one with the probes that I got was like 330 which it came with the good silicone leads. So these will be good for when it's winter time. And also in that kit, another reason why I got it is it does have the magnetic holder there. Controls that pretty good. And it does use three AA or three AAA batteries. And it does have the Bluetooth and all that on it. And it will go to the Testo app. At this point, I mean, one nice thing, you can check ant draw pretty easy with this thing. You can get in there and pick it. We'll be comparing it more to the Fluke a little bit later. Category four for 600 volts, and then I think Cat three for 1,000 volts, which that's a pretty good rating there. Doesn't say where it's made at, but I'm assuming maybe it's made over in Germany. Uh, it does do power factor too, underneath that wattage scale. It appears it's not gonna act up for me. It's coming back perfect. I'm wondering if I can trick this valve out. Uh, or I wonder, like say last night, maybe it was colder and it kicked in and just could not go back to the way it was. And there's not a whole lot to this thing. I think we got a bad spout here. And unfortunately, it don't look like we can read it very easily. All right, this has been running perfectly fine now. It took 15 minutes on the phone with someone you couldn't hardly understand to get sent over to Liebert talked to a guy there, gave me some information on this. So this is a desuperheating valve right here. Basically it's like liquid injection. So it's taking liquid, flashes it off and dumps it into the suction. If that little bulb off the head of it senses that it's too warm. I found out this valve here is a 180 PSI. So I would say it's probably an LAC 180 and it's just a traditional head pressure control valve. He said this valve malfunctioning would not have caused it, which would make sense because it's trying to drop liquid into it. So it makes sense you're taking liquid off of it and dumping it to this direction, which he said you'll see it um, sometimes get cold. That liquid solenoid valve there just purely opens when the compressor's running and it stops when it's not. This solenoid here that I'm pretty much just cheating and putting a, a, a screwdriver in there, basically to check the charge on this, this is so generic and I don't think this is right, but it's straight from the factory. You de-energize this uh, valve right here. And with that de-energized, you drive your head pressure up to 230 to 240 PSI. And this should be right in the middle, right there in the middle. I said, you're telling me that that is going to be the case when it's 10 degrees outside versus today where it's 80. He said, yes. I asked questions like, how's this or how that? 
forget it. You're not getting it. He, he don't know. He just knows what it, uh, what it uh, is supposed to be, and that's about it. So I am really having my lingering doubts that this is an issue. So since we're only running 190 or 200 pounds ahead, I'm going to get my stuff out of the way, and we're going to block this head pressure or block this coil off, and we're going to drive it up to 230, 240-ish whether that be just removing that or what, and we're gonna see where that liquid line is at, and if it's low, we're gonna add some. The other guy, he weighed in exactly what it said on the nameplate, but we don't know for certain if this is supposed to be matched with a particular coil for that rating, or does it, you know, this could be used with multiple different things, and I think it can be used with different things because we've got one of these at another location, and it's not the same evaporator. Okay, we are right now at 215, and that's just with this being unhooked. So it's not pulling through very well. Let's go ahead and see if we can put this right in about the middle. Got her blocked off now. It's in between that shroud there. We are now 226, soon to be 230. Let's go over here and see if this liquid line level has changed. I mean, you could be just like right here, and that, you know, that shouldn't be that big of a deal. And this liquid, let's see here what we got coming in. That's warm. So coming out must be the other one over there. You've got to make sure you have something in that uh, coil there. Or you'll burn it up. It's not hurting anything as long as I got a core in there. I mean, it's warm, but you're fine. A little bit thicker hunk of metal would probably be better, but trying to get this to where we needed that. So, from what I'm seeing, we're at 234, which is what he asked for, and we're not in a liquid line level. I'm going to add a little bit to it. It may just be a matter we didn't put enough in it. So, there's the unit thermostats here it's uh 55 70 degrees let's see if we can take this a little bit lower these are such a pain in the butt i'm just gonna breathe on it a little bit make it hotter so it'll run and then uh, we'll go upstairs i think you gotta hold the menu button it's been a while since i've done this one so by breathing on it we raise the humidity up to 69 percent it's dehumidifying now so we definitely would have that energized or actually unenergized 72 degrees it thinks so it's going to drop it two more degrees all right so now that's dehumidifying it literally is not energized i don't feel any magnetic pull at all in there so we'll go ahead and stick it back in there so when it does drop back down that glass is not in the middle and we're 250 ish i think 240 was as high as he needed we'll hold somewhere in that ballpark we'll get our scale and stuff hooked up the uh, veto bagger holds that refrigerant right up no problem we'll change the units here to pounds instead of ounces we've added 6.3 pounds that's that's a problem we obviously have a leak so we're gonna need to look for a leak that's great really great and you can see some green crap in there so it appears that we've probably had a leak before we were just about ready to come back up again and it just shut off as you can see we're just barely in there just went ahead and turned it off line set comes right there and goes on up to there you see some straggly looking fittings here we're gonna check those check those fittings right there we had a little tear in the 90s. Check those 90s. I checked a vapor or the condenser coil all over again. So you guys can make sure I'm doing it right. Uh-oh, what's that? What do we got here? Let's get that straight into that coil. It's, it looks like money to me. Let's see here. It's probably right in the freaking coil. Hey, it's 407C, so it won't hurt the environment, right? First, it didn't hurt the ozone. Now we're not, you know, it won't hurt the potential for global warming. So what we got here? What do we got? Talk dirty to me. It's going the ends here. Oh, there we go. There we go. There you go. That's where it hurts at, right there on the end. Let's go up here into this. Right there, nothing in that. You can see where it's kind of rusted there in that metal. A lot of times that's where it's leaking at. 
Um, now it's not wanting to go off. I'm gonna run it one more time and recheck it, but I've been all up and down this thing and it's not wanting to go off now. But yet you've seen how stupid it was there and it don't false alarm like that. So I'm gonna run it again for a second. This is, I think, a 2010. I just get a new TXV and get a new coil and be done with it, depending on how quickly it leaks. And it does look like we've had an ad before in the past. It's kind of where we're at and we're about 2.30, so we're obviously not gonna finish today. And if it gets approved, it surely isn't gonna happen anytime soon. So we'll probably just publish this video without uh, a full indication of what's gonna go on just yet. But we did find the leak. It is in the evaporator section and uh, it was low on charge and it appears that it was low enough that somehow it tricked that head pressure switch into running. And why it wouldn't eventually bring it back up and kick out, I don't know. I feel very leery about that because I'd like to see that change at the same time which I probably will recommend we do. We've been running it for a while, <clears throat> just turned it off. That filter system he's got there doesn't work very good either because it lets the air right around through here. Oh, it's got the ultrasonic, we'll see if it can hear it. No, it's not because it's a little bit cooler in here, the humidity. It's not one of those cheapy detectors. Same spot it was last time. So I went completely over it with this, with the headphones. Could not hear anything. One thing you wanna make sure you do is put something in there to block the battery, because it will go dead for no good reason sometimes. It just has a small static draw. So I do that to make sure that it doesn't go dead. But it worked great for the Linux coils that leaked, but uh, it's obviously too small of a leak for it to pick. There's just no uh, disturbances. Yeah, you can see that there's an air gap right here, and that goes right down to there we can see outside. <laughs> so the air filters are worthless. I'm surprised it's not dirty. It's another one of those outside companies uh, comes in, does these schools. Yeah, you're already picking something up as you get closer to it. That time it's in the coil. Yeah, this is the weirdest leak. The pressure's just not high enough. This thing will pick up a gnat's fart, so. No good reason why I wouldn't pick it up. I'm starting to think more or less it's probably in the coil. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap that one up. I'm gonna recommend they replace the evaporator and do the TXV at the same time since it's kind of ratty looking and I think 14 years old. Uh, seen some rust on the head on it. I am also gonna recommend we go ahead and replace the LAC 180 head pressure control valve. I think it's acting up. I don't want to take a chance. They've had a few problems already where we've been out a couple times and I don't want to have any more problems. I believe the valve could have been doing its job when it was at 150, but it should have brought the pressure up high enough, especially being as we had enough refrigerant to keep the uh, superheat where we had it at and to even have a little bit for subcooling. So to me, it just appears that the valve might have something in there. There was some other parts replaced. Who knows if there's something floating in the system like some carbon or whatever. Just to me, it sounds like a better idea to get that now than to have to come back out later because the uh, principal even asked me about it and said, hey, you know, we've had a lot of problems with that. And, um, you know, anyhow, that's one of them things where, you know, things happen and if it doesn't act up for you, I mean, I was almost ready to just walk away from it because it appeared that it was working. And, you know, when the superheat's fine and, you know, you don't really know how that receiver is supposed to be, especially when the uh, sight glass is nearly at the very, very top, which would look more along the lines of about 90%. I would never have guessed, and I, I, I've only had a few of those particular ones, but I would have never guessed to charge it that way. Uh, I would think the liquid level would definitely change on it when the temperature outside is higher and lower, but the guy I talked to was kind of short with me and just gave me the very minimum uh, information that I needed and that's what i had so those are the things we found basically the system was low it was dumping hot gas into the liquid line it wasn't cooling now the system's working and it was six pounds left simple as that well that's what we're going to do we're going to put a new evaporator and uh, swap it out it looks like it should be an easy easy swap if you can still get it and uh, it just kind of seems like liebert must have sold to another outside company and what i see it looks like they were made here in ohio but now it appears they may have sold them, they're sold to, uh, to the global market because the people I talked to was uh, definitely not from around this area. That's it guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'll see you on the next one, later.